Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminar Session 2 Mass and Family Modelling Continuing on with Part 5 Further Massing Forms okay, so In the previous video we created a sweep with multiple profiles to create this form I'm going to select that form and delete it We're now going to look at rotated forms This involves creating a central axis this time I'm going to draw a vertical line and then creating a profile that can be rotated around that central axis if I select both forms hit create form notice here I get the option to either make a flat plane from the two or a rotated form so select that You'll see it's rotated that line. Now it's an empty shell of an object with a hole down the middle. Okay. If I select this and go to Edit Profile, I can make further changes to this if I want. I could perhaps do an offset. So select my offset tool, maybe three meters, and offset inwards and join and join the ends of those lines hitting my tick now that closed shape has been rotated around that central object okay if I select this again and go to Edit Profile, get rid of those two shapes. What if I don't want a hole down the middle? If I was to do this, I can get a solid shape. But that is that is because I started the object by rotating it and then made that change in the edit mode. If I want to do that from scratch I'll come out of here undo away back to this point. If I demonstrate what happens if I'm in this environment so if I try and do the same thing here that is a single form and if I want to create a form out of it it's just going to extrude as you've seen before. So to get around that without having to do it differently and then change it if I tab through to just select the single line if I just make that a little bit longer than the form itself now they're seen as two objects and I get my solid rotate that way okay adding to this profile as you've seen is quite simple going to edit profile I could perhaps I'm going to go into the viewer to do this I'm going to draw an object such as that split this line to tidy up the ends there because it needs to be one single shape and hit there so you see you can create some quite complex forms using this rotate operation uh, the obvious example is a table leg on a the Victorian table which would be done on a machine the obvious example of this would be a table leg an old Victorian table leg okay Next I want to look at adding parameters. The obvious example of this would be a table leg. I'll demonstrate that. I'm simply drawing a line up and then maybe using my spline through points to start creating something slightly resembling a table leg or a 
of candlestick, I guess that would be there. So, okay. Let's select and delete off the objects that we've already made. I'm going to tab through to select the whole form and hit delete to leave us some empty space to work in. Okay, we're going to go through the same moves again, but this time we're going to add parameters. So we're going to do a loft, a sweep, and a rotate. We've talked about parameters in previous videos. It's a way of adding intelligence to the object and a way of controlling the size and shape of objects without physically having to go in and drag them around ourselves. Okay, so. We'll start with a loft and we will create three profiles on our three work planes. Let's create a square on the floor and give it some parameters, a circle on level two and give it some parameters, and a polygon on level three. Now the square is a very easy one to do and we've done it previously so let's quickly do that. Some of these are actually quite difficult and involved but we'll um, highlight and explain some of the workarounds you sometimes need to do when you're working with parameters. Okay, so I'm going to select my ground floor plane and draw a rectangle into the quadrants of my work planes. I'm then going to use my align tool to select the work plane, select the edge, lock it down, and work around like that. Work plane, edge, lock, work plane, edge, lock. Okay my rectangle is now being driven by my work planes. Jumping into ground floor plan, looking down in 2D, let's, let's change my scale first so you can see the text. Let's use our align dimension tool to do one of two things. Firstly, let's create an equalizing parameter that centers our rectangle. So work across the three work planes at the top, place the dimension and place and click on the EQ that equalizes that dimension. Do the same again down the side, place and EQ. That's now centralized our square. It will never stray from that center point of our model. All of the objects that we're going to create are going to be centered around sense points of the model is an important thing to be able to do and lock down. Okay, we're going to create a cube so we need one parameter to control both sides. Let's add a dimension to the top and a dimension to the side. Select one of our dimensions, add a parameter, call it cube side. Okay, that now instead of adding a parameter to our second dimension we can just use the same parameter again cube side that now means our square is centered using the EQ and it also is equally sided okay so that's that one done jump into 3D and let's check that works for us as always go into family types cube side 38,000 let's make it 20,000 apply that and we have a smaller cube so that's working for us okay the second thing we're going to do is add a circular profile on the second floor on the level 2 centered around the center point of here now this is a little bit more involved let's select level 2 so we're drawing on it use the circle tool and I'm going to draw off and away from the center here I naturally want to draw and find that intersection you see I get a graphic of the intersection there but I find that this doesn't work well because it doesn't allow us to lock to the center okay that circle has 
a graphic representing where the center point is but it's not turned on to turn it on go to center mark visible and we now get a little cross in the center we can use that cross to align to these two central work planes so let's do that we can't do it in 3d we must do it in two dimensions so jump to two dimensions the level one plan looking down even though it says level one you can see all of the levels that you're drawing on so anything copied up um, it's a bit confusing that but um, just trust me it works okay so use my align tool I'm going to grab that central reference plane and I'm going to grab the center of my circle click and lock and then I'm going to use the align tool again I'm still in the same command to grab that central work plane that's running horizontally find that center point again and lock that down okay so that's locked the circle to the center and whenever we make a change to this circle it will always expand from that central point now the moment we haven't got a parameter on this circle we're going to just simply control its diameter and so its radius to do that we could use our radial dimension tool to add a dimension to this arc but a quicker way to do it is simply select the circle and turn our temporary dimension into a permanent dimension by clicking the small icon underneath escape off reselect add a label parameter call it radius center circle naming conventions of parameters normally you wouldn't use such a long name but this is uh, this is for demonstration purposes and you'll see why I've said center before because we're going to use another radius higher up the form okay so it's okay there jump into 3d we've now got a circle on our work plane there and a square on there best practice go into family types we've now got our radius there let's change that yes that's working for us that's fine and it's staying centered that's the important thing there that's the difficult thing is, is centering that circle um, if you're tempted to just use that center point to originally form the center of your circle when you create um, when you make a change using a parameter the circle tends to go offline and off center so okay that's working fine for us please find the next video to continue with this loft and sweep and rotate tutorial okay thank you